Hey there, fellow YouTubers. I thought I'd show you my um, new decrystallizer I built. Um, I would say from scratch, but that would be a lie. Um, I modified a laboratory freezer. So uh, what I have, as you can see, no compressors. This is the compressor. It used to hold t two twin compressors because this is a minus 80 degree freezer. So that's 80 degrees in Celsius, which I think is like 123 degrees Fahrenheit. So I picked this for decrystallizing my honey because it's going to be very, very, very well insulated. But in fact, let me get this lit up. So these are some of the panels. And you see the temperature right now is 108.1 degrees, which is, this is my basically my test run. Um, it has these little styrofoam, pardon, these little styrofoam panels that help insulate the lid. And what they're used for in the freezer, they're used so you can open up part of the freezer and not expose the entire thing. But I'm going to open up the whole thing for you. So uh, what I have, this whole thing, which is 108 degrees now, was heated by this little tiny 100 watt forced air uh, convection heat, uh, excuse me, forced air resistant heater. And um, we have, it should kick on here in a, once we get down to 106. You'll see the five inch fan is mounted in front of the small heater, which also has a fan. The idea being that it's going to blow a lot of air. So I don't want to have a hot spot right here. I want to distribute that heat as evenly as possible. There's our fan kicking on. And I've got another fan down here towards the end to pick up and help move the air. So the way this will work for optimum efficiency is I will have box after box spaced with about a one inch space in between so that the heat really goes to the end and comes and circulates all the way back where it's pulled in uh, on that five inch. Let me uh, remove a cover and I'll show you what the core of this thing is. All right, I'm back. Um, so let's start with um, the power coming in, which is via this, this cord here. I've got a um, basic connection block, so it makes it easy if I want to change cords, but uh, you mainly use, this was the cord that originally came with my thermostat, but I wouldn't have much of a cord if I used it and I didn't really want to go out and buy a cord, so instead I uh, changed the wiring on the thermostat, which uh, is right here. You can see those connections right there is my new wiring for the thermostat. So that powers the thermostat. I use this style, this particular type of thermostat because I've not had any problems. I'll show you the, the thermostats I was using were these little units right here and the relays would get jammed. They would turn off, but the relays were stuck so they kept putting power and I would, I ruined a batch of honey using those. These have never failed me. So anyway, they're, they're designed to be like mounted on the outside, but I wanted something a little bit better. Um, I also wired in a power switch because these are, don't have a power switch. They basically just are on and off via plug. So I added a, just a simple toggle switch. And this goes, this powers this unit, which is nothing more than a DC power unit. So it takes one tin in, out, in and, and it, it's got three, three circuits for um, 12 volt. So, and this is capable of a lot more amps than what I'm actually using it for. So it doesn't produce much heat. Okay, battery died. So as I was saying, I left this cover on to basically protect these, uh, my switches and everything so they don't get bumped. Um, some more specifics about this unit. The insulation is five inches on the sides and uh, I don't actually know how much is in this, the top, but I imagine it's about the same if you add in the foam board um, as well as the bottom is well insulated. 
this will hold, this unit will hold 24 one pound cases. Uh, and I left, this is the filter door, which, eh, I have to work on it, it sticks a little bit. But I'm gonna use this space here instead of tearing this off, um, which I thought about doing, but there are actually casters on this side. So I needed to keep, this has six casters and it rolls very nicely, but I wanted to keep those casters. So I just left this attached. I'll put that panel back and have a little storage area with the, via the door for, you know, stuff. There's always, you know, beekeeping. There's always stuff. So anyway, uh, <laughs> the cost on this unit is pretty economical. You can get that little heater for about 20 bucks. You can also use for your power supply and instead of buying like that was a $30 power supply if you have an old computer lying around an old desktop you may you should be able to power it the the lowest power supplies I've ever seen on a desktop computer has been 250 watts and uh, this whole thing is like I said is being heated with a hundred watt I am probably only pulling maybe 120, 125 watts total when I have this thing running. And that's what you want. You want as this thing to run almost continuously. Uh, like I said, if you put a big heater in there, you're more likely to have problems. Whereas kind of a continuous flow is a way better setup. So the less heat, the better until you can't get enough heat to, to heat your honey. You want to heat your honey to um, it starts decrystallizing at 98 I like to heat my honey to 102 to decrystallize now it may take a week in a decrystallizer um, heating it at that low but that way you keep your honey raw so anyway um, I hope you guys uh, any beekeepers out there um, like this idea like I said I need to clean clean the unit it's a little dirty but um, it's all finished one more peek your uh, framework in there like I said this is the key thing is having that airflow come come down and wrap around your boxes so you're not just heating from the bottom or heating from the, trying to push the air back down this should naturally do its job so anyway I hope you guys have enjoyed the video please like and subscribe